So sweet chili chicken salad, you need chicken breasts, which makes sense, cucumber, spices, doesn't tell me what spices, this isn't a great recipe book, but it's a very nice <laughs> recipe book stand. Uh, your wedding's fast approaching and you realize that no one in the house can cook. The in-laws are looking forward to some traditional food, it could be anything from tripe to meltdown perhaps, and even babuti. So what would you do? This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield, and tonight I'm speaking to Mohao Sheshwene, who is the owner and founder of the Lazy Makoti. He teaches South Africans how to cook traditional South African food, from milk tart all the way to chakalaka, and so much more. Mohao, you are like a Jamie Oliver, <laughs> but just much nicer, I'm sure. I, I mean, try. He's a, he's a nice guy. But the Lazy Makoti, mm -hmm. the lazy sister-in-law, <laughs> essentially. Yes. Where does it come from? Um, well, basically, the Lazy Makoti started out when a friend of mine was going to get married. And she couldn't she, cook. Yeah, she <laughs> was horrible. She was worried about making a good impression with the in-laws. How to impress them past the, the beauty and the accomplishments. Um, so she asked, do you mind giving me a few lessons? We did, and then um, she then recommended a few other people, and it just snowballed from there. What were you doing at the time? At the time, I was an intern auditor. Oh, so you got a life. Excellent. Yes. So you went from auditing. Are you doing this full time? No, I'm doing this full time. Okay, now take me on the path. So your friend, mm -hmm. do you help her and you, you get her on the path? Did she impress the in-laws? She did. Is she still married? She's still married. It worked. Okay, so we're, two years now. <laughs> we, we're okay on that one. So this mm -hmm. concept is two years old, but you, mm -hmm. it's a big difference going from a career path as, a, mm -hmm. as an auditor to suddenly going into your own business. And people think, well, you're bright, you're sharp, you've got a degree behind you, um, you, you, you know accounts, you'll be absolutely fine. But it's a fundamentally different skill, isn't it? It is. Um, I think uh, starting your own business is a challenge. Every single day is different and you learn as you're going along. Okay, so you did that. Yeah. Who, wh where have you gone? Because we hear so much about incubators that are starting mm -hmm. up. And, if you're cynical and you're old, but like me, you go, oh, what, what impact are these guys having? But mm -hmm. you've actually been through a couple of processes mm -hmm. that have taken you on a, a, on a path to, to running this business. Mm -hmm. I, I, there was a thing called Lean Jump. It was uh, SAB Kickstart, Edge Growth, together with the Hookup Dinner. And we went there, we did a pitch, and then thereafter they selected a top 10. We went through a a mentorship program for about six months and then at the end of it I won and okay. got a prize money of 150k nice capital. nice startup capital absolutely nice. right what did you pitch to them because this is uh, these various tools and things there's a that's a spatula right yes, yes okay that's a, a wooden spoon traditional wooden spoon <laughs> um, so you you got into kit, uh, kitchen implements and we'll talk about that in just a bit mm -hmm. but it started off purely as giving cooking lessons mm -hmm. So it started off with just the cooking lessons um, and then I got one apron made and a few items made that I do, would use during the classes and then the clients would ask, how do we get this? And then I saw there is another gap in this market. Okay, so the original pitch was all about the cooking lessons. Mm -hmm. What did you learn through the mentorship process that you went on? Clearly, you could cook. That wasn't, <laughs> uh, that, that wasn't something you needed to learn. Yeah. Um, so what did they teach you? Um, just how to pivot your business, I think. Pivot as your business. Now you see you're speaking a language I don't understand already. That is <laughs> comes out of the, the incubator jump. speak. Yes. Um, so as entrepreneurs, you get so um, hyped up with your uh, your initial idea. You don't want to change it. You don't want to touch it. So they just teach you that sometimes the big idea is great, but if you just tweaked it here and there, it'll be so much better. Okay. So six months, you go through the process. Were you running the business in the meantime? You had I to. You had to live. Mm -hmm. uh, I was running the business in the meantime. Okay. And were you noticing that you were coming back from the different coaching sessions and just? What do we call it? Tw not tweaking? Uh, pivot. Pivot. You were pivoting on a regular basis? Yes. Uh, because initially when I went through the program, uh, my only target market was the, the working woman, the modern girl who just wants to learn how to make uh, traditional South African food. And then with that, I found that there is another market that is the domestic helper. So some of these ladies don't necessarily want to learn themselves. Mm -hmm. They want to bring a helper who will learn. Yeah. Okay, so and has that become a nice sideline too? It's become a great sideline. Okay, so that's the focus of the business is mm -hmm. the cooking lessons. What's, what started the, the passion for cooking? What got you, what got you going? 
I have been cooking for a long time, since I was 12. Um, my father is a pastor, so you can imagine at my house, they, there's Busy. always someone there. Um, if you come to my house, we will feed you. <laughs> <laughs> we cook a lot. Okay, so, and, and you started off cooking traditional food. Mm -hmm. um, that's the main emphasis of the Lazy Magoti, the traditional South African food, because there are plenty of other places you can go to learn, say, Italian or Asian cuisine. But where do you go if your mom never taught you how to make bap? And, and pap's quite easy, isn't it? It is. It, I hope it so. Is. As I remember from a long time ago. Um, when you made it. When I made it, yes. And you know, as long as you. And I think burning <laughs> the stuff, the, burning the pup on the bottom is good. It gives a, a it certain. Does. It gives a nice flavour. You mm -hmm. see, we're absolutely fine. If you like the fine crumbs, you've got to do a little bit more. And, uh, I remember. Oh, yeah, Bruce. Vaguely. I'm there. I'm there. Then, now, you then diversify this business. You go from the cooking lessons, and, mm -hmm. you, and how many of those are you doing a week? Are you doing a crowd of 100 at a time? Or are you doing one on one lessons? How's um, that working? I do one on one lessons. These are house calls. So you would book a session and then we'll talk about a lesson plan and then I will come in the comfort of your own home we will do the lesson do you judge people's kitchens no of course not okay just checking because <laughs> otherwise it's embarrassing are people open to have you coming into their homes I mean as South Africans we kind of suspicious of our neighbors we, you know we're not uh, always as welcome as, as welcoming as we could be people have been very open I think when you need the lesson you need, the lesson. <laughs> you need help you'll do anything <laughs> yeah and and, and, and and how do you figure out what an appropriate price point is because your time is valuable mm -hmm. and it's not about the time you spend in the house you got to get there you got to prep you got to brief you got to do all of these things mm -hmm. um if it comes down to just the one hour lesson or the two hour lesson how do you price it that was also something that um, the lean jump uh, program helped with what is the appropriate price that uh, a south african would be paying and they won't think hmm, this is too much mm. um, i charge 450 per lesson um, I mostly do uh, around the Joburg and Pretoria areas, so uh, the client would then buy the ingredients. Mm. So what I'm charging for is my, it's for my your, time. It's, it's for your time. Yes. How then do you grow this business? Because it's the Lazy Makoti. It's not the Lazy Makotis. You don't have, do you have a troop of uh, Lazy Makotis or formerly Lazy Makotis who, <laughs> who are in support? How do you grow this business beyond just yourself because that's always going to be the mm -hmm. risk that you have a finite amount of time yeah there is a price point uh, at which you can charge and once you're busy mm -hmm. you can't really grow the business well um, what the how do you pivot that <laughs> you learned a new word I'm learning. I mean you pivot <laughs> as often as possible so with with some of the, the price money that I've won I'm looking to have premises uh, where I can have more than one person at a time. So I'll be able to take on group sessions and I am training a few people to do the classes as well because I get calls from people from the KZN, from Limpopo who also want the lessons. And the corporate market surely is good for this as well because mm -hmm. people are always looking for new ways, for team building, for, for all of that sort of stuff. Is there a market there that you've tapped into yet? There is a definite market there. The other market is I've done a few lessons with uh, tourists who say when every time they travel, when they get to a new country, they'd like to learn about the food indigenous to yeah. that uh, country. So that's also a great target market that I'm looking at. And into. for the price of a meal at Kramadoulas, if it's still open, uh, mm -hmm. you can learn to do it yourself. You know, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, when it comes then to extending the brand, the Lazy Makoti brand, you're going into a very competitive space. York, for example, the guys who do the breadboards and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the wooden uh, kitchen tools are everywhere. Clicks, you go in, they're absolutely everywhere. Um, then you've got the Jamie Olivers and um, the, the lady with, with the syrupy voice. What's her name? Nigella Lawson. Um, the syrupy uh, voice. She is syrupy. Well, she tries very hard. Maybe it's honeyed, not even syrupy. Um, Nigella Lawson, who have extended their public personas into equipment. How do you then make a meaningful impact with what you produce? Because this is bamboo, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's bamboo. Mm. Um, so the one thing I'm absolutely proud of is that everything is locally produced. It's produced in a township called Mamilodi in Pretoria. Yeah. So that's the one thing I'm proud of and the one thing I'm hoping South Africa will get behind. Because uh, it's one thing for me as an entrepreneur to want everybody to support me, yet I am getting the stuff made for in a fraction China. of the cost in China. Yeah. And I really could have done that, but I am very big on um, the impact that I will have on other people's lives as well. Okay, so it's Mamalodi um, sort of made. Mamalodi, where, where do the resources come from, though, the raw materials? Because do we have a bamboo market in South Africa big enough to serve this? 
Um, they get the wood um, in town in Pretoria. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's probably from elsewhere. But the point is, you're going into this market. Now, distribution, mm. of course. In mm -hmm. The moment you've got a retail product, you can do it via your courses and you can have the sideline and the, mm -hmm. the suitcase of stuff, but that's going to be expensive. So yeah. how do you get retail distribution of this stuff? Because this, the, these are good. I mean, these, yeah. these, these, these are good. These are, uh, these are kung f no, they're salad service, Same. right? Yeah. Really. See, I'm so sensitive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I understand <laughs> this stuff. Um, how do you get retail distribution? Um, that's the other thing I'm still working on. Our web shop actually goes live. So people can buy the stuff online. And but then you're going up against Yuppie Chef. And they, serve, they sell the blingy stuff. And they have been struggling in this market and they amongst the best they win prizes for being like the best online retailers and they sell the globally branded product mm -hmm. how do you go up against them why don't you just sell it through them because uh, you don't want to be independent hey, you want to be independent i do i uh. do um so i am looking at a few avenues uh the one other avenue that i thought of exploring was the agent route having um, ladies that that would sell the product. So do it like old-fashioned Tupperware parties. That sort of, that exactly sort of. Exactly like that Tupperware. Sort of, that, that sort of model. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, there's a long road ahead of you. A long, long road. You've been doing it for two years. Mm -hmm. How? For just, oh, yeah, for two years. Yeah. Yeah. How does this evolve? Um, how it evolves is basically anything kitchen from a cookbook that I'm working on. Okay, because this is not your cookbook. This That's is a, not my This is cookbook. somebody else's cookbook, and it just says spices. It doesn't tell us what. <laughs> it's, it's not a, this is not a great example. No, no, This no. is one of your friends' cookbooks, <laughs> isn't it? Personal cookbooks. But you, you're working on a cookbook. I'm working on a cookbook. Do you have a, a public per persona, public presence, mm -hmm. that people, oh, there she is, the Lazy Makoti. There's the book. Here are the implements. Here are the lessons. I mean, you've got to tie it all together. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to think so, yes. Okay. People do recognize. That's the Lazy Makoti. Um, so just to, um, to I guess, um, piggyback on that and do more. So everything kitchen, I will have it. Okay. Um, when you say everything kitchen, you scare some of the people who've taught you in the incubators because they want you to focus, don't they? They want yeah. you to focus on what you're good at. Uh -huh. But, but you're, you're evolving this business. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is to take it away from being just about you. Because mm -hmm. th th that is... I'm just one person. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. how many people are you employing so far? So far, we're just employing two people okay. and one freelancer. Wonderful, but yeah. I've, got a, I've got a funny feeling about this. I've got a funny feeling. I think this is. I think this has got legs. I think you. I ah, think you've so got. I think you've got what it takes. Good luck with the products. Good luck uh -huh. with the lessons because I think um, that that is going to be really good. Uh -huh. You must talk to somebody called Jenny Morris. Jenny Morris is very famous, and she's she like is. she's on DSTV, and she's, she's got her amazing. own shows and all of that sort of stuff. Where do you get that inspiration from? Um, I guess. From everyone else that's done it, there's a lady called Dora Sitole. She's been doing it. Um, Yosibas, who started off on a local TV and now she's on the Foot Network. So, yeah. Okay. What's the simplest recipe you can teach me without the ingredients? Uh, chakalaka. Chakalaka. Give me, give me a demonstration. Uh, <laughs> do you like air guitar? Give me, a, <laughs> give me a chakalaka demonstration. What do I need? Uh, so all you need is an onion. Uh, red pepper, yellow pepper, green pepper. Right. Dice that, and then. How big are the pieces? Uh, just about that. Uh, tiny pieces. Tiny okay. pieces, and then you fry that in oil. What kind of oil? Olive oil. Olive oil. Got to be olive oil. Yes. Yeah. Healthy, and then you fry that, and then you add your curry powder. Yep. A teaspoon of curry powder. Okay. And then you fry that, and then you grate your carrots. Yeah. And then you chuck that in there. You fry that. How long am I cooking this for? You are cooking this um, until the, the onion is done. Yeah. Then you add your carrots. Right. And then you fry that until that's cooked. Right. And then you add your tomatoes. Yep. Or tomatoes even. Yep. <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> yes. And then you add your stock cube. And then you add your baked beans. And then you cook for a further 10 minutes. And that's it. Within 25 minutes, I'm done. Real easy. There we go. Even I can manage that. Thank you for a chakalaka lesson. <laughs> Mohao Seshwen is the owner and the founder of the Lazy Makoti. As you can hear, she's the furthest thing from a Lazy Makoti you will ever find. From auditing into an enterprise that has been boosted by some of the great incubators, including SAB Kickstart and others who've worked together. The Hookup Dinner, we had the Hookup Dinner here the other day as well, talking about just creating the networks, creating the opportunities, creating opportunities for people to say, 
Corporate career, thank you so much. Love the big paycheck, but you know what? You can keep it. I've got bigger plans. That's what the world is all about. Thank you for watching. There'll be more cooking show tomorrow. It might not be about cooking, but it'll certainly cook, if you know what I mean. Good night.